The year is 1918. New Orleans hums with life. Jazz spills out of every doorway, but a darkness lurks in the humid air. A chill wind blows through the French Quarter. It whispers of an unseen terror stalking the night. The city's heartbeat quickens. Fear becomes a constant companion. Behind closed doors, whispers turn to panicked cries. The Axeman is coming. May 23rd, 1918, a date that would forever be etched in the annals of New Orleans' dark history. The early morning light reveals a horror that would send shockwaves through the community. Joseph Maggio, a well-known grocer, lies dead in his own home, a place once filled with the warmth of daily life. His wife Catherine lies beside him, barely clinging to life. Their throats are slashed, a brutal testament to the violence inflicted upon them. The murder weapon, an axe, found discarded nearby, still stained with their blood. The killer gained entry through a back door, slipping into the house under the cover of darkness. A panel was chiseled away with precision, leaving the lock untouched, a chilling sign of the intruder's skill. It's a scene that will become all too familiar in the months to come as a series of similar murders unfold. The city is in shock, gripped by fear and uncertainty. Who could be behind such a heinous act? As the police begin their investigation, the community is left to wonder, is this the work of a madman or something even more sinister? Weeks turn into months. The city is gripped by a relentless fear. More murders follow, each more brutal than the last. The victims are seemingly random, leaving the community in a state of constant dread. A pregnant woman, full of life and hope, is mercilessly taken. A young couple just starting their journey together meets a tragic end, even a priest. A man of faith and guidance is not spared from the terror. All are killed in their sleep, their dreams shattered by the cold steel of an axe. The weapon of choice is always the same, an axe leaving a chilling signature. The citizens of New Orleans are paralyzed with fear. They bolt their doors, hoping to keep the terror at bay. They arm themselves with whatever they can find, desperate for a sense of security. Some even sleep in shifts, taking turns to watch over their loved ones, desperate to protect their families from the unseen menace. But the Axeman is always one step ahead, a shadowy figure that slips through the night, leaving a trail of fear and death in his wake. March 13th, 1919, a date that would forever be etched in the annals of New Orleans history. A letter arrives at the Times-Picayune newspaper, causing a stir among the staff in the city. It is signed, The Axeman. The name sends shivers down the spine of anyone who reads it. The writer claims responsibility for the murders that have been plaguing the city, a series of brutal and senseless killings. He taunts the police, reveling in his gruesome work, mocking their inability to catch him. But then, a chilling twist emerges from the darkness. The Axeman proposes a deal, one that is as bizarre as it is terrifying. He will spare the lives of those who play jazz music in their homes on a specific night. On the night of March 19th, the entire city comes alive with the sound of jazz. Every home, every street corner and every club is filled with the lively soulful tunes of jazz as the people of New Orleans cling to the hope that music will save them from the Axeman's wrath. The night of March 19th passes without incident but the reprieve is short-lived. The killings resume. The police are baffled. They chase every lead, every rumor, but the Axeman remains elusive. Was the letter a hoax? A cruel joke designed to instill even more fear? Or was there a method to the Axeman's madness? October, 1919. The murders abruptly stop. The Axeman vanishes into thin air. Was he caught? Did he flee the city? Or did he simply tire of his gruesome game? The Axeman of New Orleans remains an enigma. A ghost story whispered on the humid breeze. A chilling reminder that some mysteries are never solved and some fears never die.